Sometimes there is a lot more growing in our potting media than we would like to admit. If you see a white powdery fuzz like a cotton candy or a flower type substance or even a spider web type substance, this video is going to cover what exactly that is and if it is white mold. Hi, I'm Amanda Matthews and thank you for watching my video at Orchidary where I share my tips of how to grow orchids indoors since my outside climate is not that great for orchid care. So in this video I'm going to talk about what is the white stuff inside your potting media whether it be sphagnum moss or orchid bark and to identify what that is and there are three common culprits of what that can be and one is orchid mold the other is powdery mildew and the third one is mealybugs but before i actually go into these one by one i do want to say as a new orchid grower if you are used to cattleya roots or if you're used to phalaenopsis roots or if you're used to dendrobium roots there are so many types of orchids and one like the pathiopetalum the phragmopedium or other kind of terrestrial orchids they will have white hairs coming off their roots that is normal and you know when i first repotted my frag I thought, what the heck did I do wrong? What is this? And it totally freaked me out. But once I realized, oh, that's the way they're supposed to look. That's why it's always good to have references. Don't cut it out. Don't start treating it with all these products that could eventually harm your orchid. Just know that that is normal. Oncidiums also have this fuzzy kind of root. The first one I want to talk about is snow mold. Now snow mold or orchid mold as it's commonly called is a problem and it will kill your orchid. I've read so many things saying that leave it alone it will go away by itself and it doesn't pose a threat to your orchid. This is absolutely not true. The snow mold will kill your orchid but not the way you think it will. And that's why I want to put it out there very clear because you might see this white stuff in your orchid pot and think oh it's snow mold. No it'll go away by itself. See the snow mold will come into usually a new setup. So right after you set up and you use this orchid bark that has a mold in it already and the mold will have spores in it but you can't see it because they're in the spore phase. Once this repot is set up and there is humidity in the pot that is what attracts the snow mold to your orchid. You know when you get sunburned and you can peel back the skin that's what it looks like. It looks like a web but it gets so thick you can actually peel it back. That is the problem because this web is hydro repellent. It does not let water pass through it. So once was what once was a high humidity potting media now becomes a no humidity potting media because water cannot get to the bark. It can't get to the roots. The orchid mold will die off but your orchid roots will die off first. <laughs> That's the problem with the snow mold. What attracts it to the potting media is what exactly kills it because of its properties of being hydro repellent. So to get rid of snow mold you need to repot your entire orchid, throw away that potting media. It already came with the spores. Because it is a fungus, it does spread extremely quickly with these spores. The second white stuff that could be on your orchid is powdery mildew. Now I want you to imagine a scene with me here. Think of a dark dungeon type cellar or wine cellar that has no light, no air ventilation, it's damp, there's water dripping off the walls. Can you smell that? I mean take that image and just smell it. That is what powdery mildew smells like when you repot. You can really smell this stuff. Now it's different than the snow mold because the snow mold will actually form a web. This powdery mildew does not. You know like on an orange if you leave it out too long or a grapefruit and it gets that fungus on the outside of it and those spores spread. That's what this powdery mildew does. Now some molds are actually good and they have benefits to the human environment such as the vaccine penicillin or the yeast in bread or making of cheese and tofu. But in the orchid pot 
they have no practical use whatsoever. Now the treatment to both snow mold and powdery mildew is first a total repot. And if you're going to reuse the pot, really scrub it out, use a strong detergent, make sure that pot is eliminated of all kinds of spores. And that's the problem with these because they that's the smell that you go into that cellar, the wine cellar, or you can imagine, you know, adolescent socks, you know, that's been in their room for a long time or mushrooms, you know, that, that specific smell that just comes up and you're smelling the spores. So you're going to repot and then you're going to pot with a medium that drains very well. Now, I do not have very good luck with pure sphagnum moss and it is, this is what usually attracts the powdery mildew and the snow mold. But if it works for you, great, use it. Just make sure that it's draining well. An orchid that will sit in a humid environment for a long period of time not only develops bacterial root rot, but also attracts powdery mildew and snow mold. So get rid of that and make sure you use a potting media that drains. The second thing you want to do is spray your orchid with a fungicide. Do not use pesticide or insecticide because these are not pest and insects. They are other types of things. So use a fungicide. My go-to one is Fizan 20, but I know it doesn't, it isn't sold in all countries. I have heard of people using mouthwash and like Listerine, either the one with alcohol or not alcohol, but that does work too. And it doesn't harm the orchid for some reason. What you want to make sure of is that in the product that you buy, they have this ingredient right here, which is the active ingredient that kills the powdery mildew and the powdery mildew and the snow mold, mill mold. <laughs> you can use hydrogen peroxide too, but it does not do the best job for this and it does more harm to the orchid roots than it actually does to the mold itself or the mildew so it's it works is if this is the only thing you have but beware that it can have some side effects now remember the image of the dungeon cellar basement you know <laughs> horror movie type thing now what attracts the mold and the mildew to this is exactly the cooler temperatures. So another way to get rid of this mold and mildew is raise the temperature mold and mildew like the temperature is a little cooler. So if you can raise your temperature, use a seedling mat or a, in some places where they call them a heating pad, but not the human heating pad. It has to be specific for plants or just raise your overall temperature in your indoor environment if you can. The third way to eliminate mold and mildew is to actually keep that air circulation high. Remember in this trap cellar, you are not going to have ventilation. Now the problem with this is that if you do not keep, if you did not treat your orchid correctly and you increase the air circulation, these spores are just going to spread from orchid to orchid. They're going to jump around and it is going to infest your entire collection. So make sure that you have actually treated your orchid first and then keep the circulation high on that fan. Before I go on to the next tip of what white little thing could be in your potting media, if this video is helping, please give it a like or comment below because there isn't an orchid that I cannot kill. <laughs> so maybe you have an orchid too that you're having problem with a pest or an insect. Just comment below what that problem is so I can actually research it and give an answer back to you. And let's go on to our third little culprit of what powdery stuff could actually be in your potting media. It's not mold, it's not mildew, it's actually what we call a mealybug. Now a mealybug looks like a little roly-poly, a tiny roly-poly, who rolled itself in powder sugar. <laughs> they're not actually white, really, they're pink underneath, but with all this white fuzz around them, to the human eye and to the microscope, they look white. Mealybugs can be removed physically, manually by just wiping off the leaf and make sure you know, get a detergent, get a Fizan 20 again, a bactericide, insecticide, because now we're treating a whole different problem with his, an actual live insect. If none of these three are actually what is on your orchid, you can take a look at this video up here of the most common 
orchid bark bugs that infest the orchid bark and these down here which infest sphagnum moss. Now these insects and bugs and little critters are different in each video so make sure you check them out. I hope your collection is pest free as soon as possible and happy cultivating.